Hey Spartans, welcome to my very first attempt to add a screencast. Hopefully this is the start of many that we will be doing this year. Um, and I want to give you a little insight into what we're going to be doing. You're going to be watching this short video that has a PowerPoint presentation as well as my voice giving you some extra things to think about. What I'd like you to do is, is, as you're watching, to go ahead and take notes on the things that you see and the, the things that you hear. If there's something that you missed or you'd like me to go back to, there's no problem because this is all on a video and you can do so. At the end of this presentation, there's going to be an assignment for you to do, so please pay close attention. The topic of this particular discussion are the five themes of geography. And Specifically, it's a way that we need to be looking at how we think about geography because geography is not just about mountains and rivers, although that's a big part of it. It's also an important tool to understanding the how and why people do things in their lives. So the first theme that we're going to look at is location. The second is place. The third is the human environmental interaction. The fourth is movement, and the fifth are the regions. The location. Location answers the question, where are we? There are two kinds of location. There is an absolute location, okay, and absolute means exactly. This is exactly where something is. It's a pinpoint or it's an address or it's that specific place where the latitude and longitude intersect. Okay, It could be um, a global location on a GPS system. Okay, um, Paris, France, for instance, is at 48 degrees north. That means 48 degrees above the equator and 2 degrees east of the line of longitude that runs through Greenwich Village. The White House is specifically an address at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. The other way we can look at location is to look at a relative location. And relative, by definition, is someplace that's a little broader. It's about there. You could say to somebody, my house is near Calabasas High School. That is a relative location. Okay? It could be described by landmarks, time, direction, or distance from one place to another. So you could say, if you turn right at the gas station, you'll get to the street that I live on. A Wright Middle School is an absolute location. It can be pinpointed on the map. If we're talking about it in a relative location sense, we could say, if you get off on Las Virginis and go down the road, you will hit A Wright Middle School. The second theme that we're looking at is place, and place answers the question, what is it like there? What kind of place is this? Okay. And one of the ways that we break down place is to look at the human characteristics of a place. What are the languages, customs, and beliefs? So if we looked at, say, um, Calabasas as a place, you would ask those questions. What languages are spoken here? What customs do we have? Like, what do people do on a Friday night when they want to have fun? And what are our belief systems? What do we think about what is right and wrong? Every place has its own customs and beliefs. We can also look at a place in terms of its physical characteristics. Okay, And we're looking at things specifically so that you could say, A.E. Wright Middle School is surrounded by mountains uh, that has a woodland environment. We see deer in the morning and there's skunks that often walk across the street. Uh, there's a little creek that runs through uh, the back of our school. Um, and those are the physical characteristics of the place. Okay. You'll see here a forest or river. Those are our landforms or physical geography that we see in this particular place. The third way we can define geography is through movement. Um, and this is really very important when we're speaking historically because people and how they move ideas and things um, is a very 
very important part of why people do what they do. So we ask the question, how are people, goods, ideas move from place to place? And how that happens now is actually quite different than how it happened historically. We can look at human movement. Okay, How do people move? Today we use trucks, trains, cars, automobiles, all those different kinds of things to move. Uh, back historically, those were not the modes of transportation. That wasn't the way people moved. They moved by horseback. They might have moved from camel caravans, or they might have been moving simply by walking. We need to look at how information moves. Uh, for us, we use our phones, our computers, our emails. Um, if I need to let you know something that's going on in class, I can send you an email. Uh, I, can, I can send out a phone call. Mrs. Taylor can send out a phone call. That's how we move information. And really, really quite importantly is how ideas move. Okay. For instance, if there's something that's very popular here in California, how does that get to a place like a small rural town in uh, Idaho? How do those ideas move? What do people use now to move ideas? And you could probably look at something like the TV or the radio or magazines, those sorts of things are the things that move, that, that make people think a different way. Back historically, it was a different way. Uh, people had to talk to others, they had to know what was going on, they had to move from place to place and share those ideas. Uh, so if you think of how books became books, uh, the Chinese sharing their knowledge of how to make paper and a printing press, comes to the Europeans and actually changes the course of history in doing so. Next we can look at regions. And regions ask the question, how are they similar to and different from other places? So what makes Calabasas different than Woodland Hills or Agora? What are the things that distinguish us? And there are formal regions, there are functional regions, and there are vernacular regions. Okay. Formal regions are usually defined by a group of people. Uh, could be politicians, uh, but, but what we see are things like, well, this is the city of Calabasas, and there are lines that are drawn to show us that, and this is the state of California, and there are lines to be drawn that we see that way. Okay. Um, they can be defined by similar characteristics. Okay, this is the Malibu Corridor. It is this uh, small valley that leads to the beach. Uh, we have the Corn Belt where all, well not all, but much of the corn in the country is grown in the Midwest. We have the Rocky Mountains which takes over several states. And we can even have something smaller like that's where in downtown Los Angeles we see um, a place known as Chinatown. And those are formal regions. They are defined specifically by somebody. We have functional regions. Um, specifically, if we're talking about um, where does the uh, Calabasas patch go, okay? And that, that is the Calabasas region that it would go to. Um, you might look at it in cell phone reception. Well, this tower serves this particular region. This area is where you would see um, you would get your phone reception from. And then there's vernacular regions, and these are regions that are defined by people's perception. So it could be something that you see, or it might be something that somebody else sees. Um, specific vernacular regions are places like the Middle East, okay, the Arabian Peninsula, and it might include, some people might think that it includes all of the countries on the, uh, on the peninsula, or they might think that it only has a few. When we define the South, um, we're thinking of places like Georgia and Florida, and some people might put other places in that others might not. In order to remember the five themes, which I'm going to ask that you do, uh, we've got a little bit of a helper here. If you think to yourself, so if I asked you to list the five themes of geography, you could put them out by thinking this, Mr. Help. M is for movement, R is for regions, HE is for human environmental interaction, 
L is for location, and P is for place. Sort of a nice little way to remember the five themes. Your assignment. You're to take out a separate sheet of paper and come up with 10 terms that someone would have to know in order to talk about the five themes of geography. Perhaps you want to discuss absolute and relative um, and define those. Uh, maybe you think that they need to know the terms latitude and longitude. Whatever the case, I need you to come up with 10 terms. Once you have your terms, you need to define them. When you define terms, please, please, please be sure to paraphrase them, which means putting them in your own words. This is a very, very important thing that we're going to be focusing on all year. With that, I want to thank you for listening to this this screencast. Um, I hope you are ready to go and I will expect to see your work with you tomorrow. Have a great day.